Hello, welcome to the beautiful Xianqi Channel. I'm Yi Yi Ouyang. The 17th World Chinese Chess Championship was held in East Malaysia this October, during which many great games were played by world-class players. Today, I'm going to walk you through this wonderful game played by Grandmaster Wang Tianyi versus Master Li Dezhi. GM Wang moves first. The first move, Red Cannon Two moves to file five. Black horse eight jumps to file seven. The second move, red horse two jumps to file three. Black chariot nine moves to file eight. The third move, red chariot one moves to file two. Black horse two jumps to file three. The fourth move, red pawn three advances by one point. Black pawn three advances by one point. The fifth move, red horse eight jumps to file nine. Black chariot one advances by one point. A more common reply from Black is pawn one advancing by one point. In this game, Black developed a ranked chariot on the right, which is a relatively novel way to open the game. This enables Black to create an overall power balance over the board while avoiding using predictable moves that are too commonly seen. The sixth move, Red Cannon Eight moves to file seven. Black Horse Three jumps to file two. With this move, the opening has been set up as a fifth and seventh file cannons, third file pawn versus green horses, third file pawn. In the sixth move, raise another option is cannon eight advancing by four points, with which red intends to deploy more pieces to black's left flank and put more pressure on it. Raise cannon eight moving to file seven. Aims at Black's third file horse and the elephant on the bottom rank, which is a simple but decisive move. Black's horse jumped outwards to the river rank, together with the cannon, blockading Red's chariot and maintaining the balance in this position. The players on both sides are masters who can always maneuver and deploy pieces naturally and smoothly. The seventh move. Red pawn seven advances by one point. Black pawn three advances by one point. Red pushed forward the pawn, immediately creating tension between both sides on Black's right flank. This move kind of reflects GM One's sharp style of play. Besides the pawn pushing, Red has other lines, including horse three jumping to file four. And chariot nine advancing by one point, etc., all of which have plenty of possibilities in how they can be played out. The eighth move, red cannon seven advances by seven points. Black advisor four advances to file five. Black's pawn took red's pawn, facing up to the challenge. Red sent out the cannon to capture black's elephant. Generally, in the opening phase. Cannons are supposed not to infiltrate deeply into the opponent's territory, according to Xiangqi sayings. At this point, Black's right flank is just like a facile ground, as described in the Art of War. When he has penetrated into hostile territory, but to no great distance, it is facile ground. Red single cannon distantly marched forward, and other pieces were not yet ready to cooperate with it. Meaning that the gains would be limited. This is exactly the situation implied by the definition of the facile ground, but the fascination of Xiangqi lies in that the rules and the principles for playing the game are not for confining the players. GM Wang boasts his brilliant talent, capturing Black's elephant with initiative in two moves and allowing Black's pawn to cross the river. Which shows his confidence and calmness. The ninth move, Red Chariot Two advances by six points. Black Elephant Seven advances to file five. Red Second File Chariot crossed the river and reached Black's pawn rank, suppressing the space of Black's chariot, horse, and cannon on the left, in order that the efficiency as the first player would be maintained. Black took the advantage of the initiative gained when the elephant chased Red Seventh File Cannon, and constructed defensive force on the deployment rank. 
with the protective cannons, horse, and elephant. The tenth move: red cannon seven moves to foul eight. Black horse two jumps to foul four. Red cannon hit black's horse, evading from the chase of black's elephant with initiative. When being chased, this cannon was able to step aside and counterattack in such a facile ground. Through this seemingly effortless move, the player's skillful maneuver was shown. The eleventh move: red chariot nine moves to foul eight. Black cannon eight moves to foul nine. The twelfth move: red chariot two moves to foul three. Black cannon two moves to foul three. In the previous move, black moved the cannon, offering an exchange so that his eight foul chariot could be brought out in time. Red chariot two moving to foul three turned down the exchange. Capturing Black's pawn and inhibiting the horse, so as to maintain the suppression upon Black's defensive force on the deployment rank. In the chapter "The Nice Situation in the Art of War," it said, "On facile ground, I would see that there is close connection between all parts of my army. It means that when we have pieces staying on facile ground, we should actively connect all our pieces." To improve our overall capabilities for a battle, on the other hand, from the perspective of our opponent, he should keep our pieces which have entered the facile ground separated from other pieces. Therefore, given that the red cannon is now in the facile ground, for red he should think about coordinating the cannon with other pieces. For black he should think about cutting off the connections between. Red pieces at the front and those at the rear, in order that the red pieces in the front would fall into a serious ground where they would be difficult to mobilize and likely to get attacked, or into a difficult ground where there are mountain forests and rugged steeps, and it would be difficult for the pieces to traverse to construct efficient formations. Black's cannon two moving to foul three, was a blunder. Because it would allow Red's eight-foul chariot and cannon to cooperate. In the next move, Red is going to pull back the cannon to aim at Black's central elephant and to pin down Black's deployment rank. Red's two chariots and the cannon will wield their power efficiently. In contrast, Black's formation is relatively inflexible and confined to a cramped space. We can conclude that either side of the chessboard should deal with the situations on a facile ground seriously; otherwise, their position would easily become passive. The thirteenth move: Red Cannon Eight retreats by two points; Black Chariot Eight advances by six points. The fourteenth move: Red Horse Three jumps to foul four; Black Chariot One moves to foul four. The fifteenth move, red advisor six, advances to foul five. Black chariot eight moves to foul six. Black used the chariot to chase red's horse. It was not the best move. It might appear that it would gain some initiative for black, but it had in fact resulted in the opposite. In this position, even though black's deployment rank has been controlled. Black's chariot on the right is occupying the rear file. The left one is on red's pawn rank, and the horse and the pawn are entrenching on the river rank, ready for more substantive attack moves. Black should have tried chariot A moving to file five, which would open up red's pawn rank, such that black would be able to occupy the contentious ground in the highland of the chessboard. Gaining the upper hand in the central file and river rank areas, if Black had managed to separate Red's pieces, he would have obtained initiative in the central file area. The sixteenth move: Red horse four jumps to file five. Black horse four retreats to file five. The seventeenth move: Red chariot three moves to file five. Black chariot four advances by seven points. Black's move, in which the horse retreated to take Red's horse, was a blunder. Red's chariot took the central horse, sacrificing the chariot for delivering a checkmate threat, which was a brilliant move. 
The Grand Master's powerful maneuvers for attacks have been illustrated on a chessboard. In such a quiet position, where the pieces were intertwined, the offensive action broke out all of a sudden with a move that was like an unexpected thunderbolt on open plains. If Black had taken the chariot with horse seven advancing to file five, Red would have played cannon eight moving to file five, and Black could not have been able to resolve the double cannon's checkmate on the central file and the smothered checkmate on the bottom rank by Red's eight file chariot. Black's chariot moving forwards to Red's elephant eye turned out to be a forced move. And Red's attack against Black has become clearer. The eighteenth move, Red Cannon Eight moves to file five. Black General Five moves to file four. Red's cannon took Black Central Elephant, resulting in the breakdown of Black's defense on the deployment rank. The attacking force of Red's double chariots and double cannons has been really strong. The nineteenth move. Red chariot five moves to file seven. Black horse seven retreats to file eight. Sun Tzu said, "You can be sure of succeeding in your attacks if you only attack places which are undefended." Black has a very weak defense for the right side of his bottom rank, and Red had already noticed this and moved his central chariot towards this weak spot. In the following moves, Black's general will be. Forced to move around, and the two chariots cannot be pulled back quickly. Black will have to rely only on the linked cannons to barely cope with the situation. The twentieth move: Red Chariot Eight advances by nine points. Black General Four advances by one point. The twenty-first move: Red Chariot Eight retreats by one point. Black General Four retreats by one point. The twenty-second move: Red Chariot Seven moves to file nine. Black cannon three moves to file one. The twenty-third move. Red chariot nine moves to file seven. Black cannon one moves to file three. Red used detour tactic to adjust its combined formation for attacks, gaining even greater advantages. The twenty-fourth move. Red rear cannon moves to file six. Black chariot four retreats by one point. The twenty-fifth move. Red advisor five advances to file six. Black chariot six moves to file five. The twenty-sixth move, red elephant seven advances to file five. Black chariot five retreats by four points. Red sometimes aimed at Black's bottom rank to launch attacks, and sometimes turned to the sixth file to deliver a checkmate threat. Black's pieces were scattered about the chessboard, unable to cope with all the attacks. Black had no choice but to trade the chariot for Red's two pieces. Hoping for relief from the impending danger, Red's strategy for maneuvering is a vivid illustration of what is said in the chapter "Weak Points and Strong in the Art of War," and his forces being thus distributed in many directions, the numbers we shall have to face at any given point will be proportionately few. The twenty-seventh move, Red Cherry Eight advances by one point. Black General Four advances by one point. The twenty-eighth move, Red Chariot Seven retreats by two points. Black Chariot Five moves to file four. At this point, Red's two chariots hold great attack potentials, like ferocious tigers running down the hill. In Red's rear part, there are sufficient amount of pawns and a whole set of advisers and elephants. Black's general is not at a safe place. The chariot and two cannons have made every effort to defend on the deployment rank. The horse is not in a good position. Black has lost two elephants and has less pawns than Red. It's fair to say that Black is now in a dire situation. Red just took Black's third file pawn, which had crossed the river, thereby the horse on the edge file were now able to jump out freely. The twenty-ninth move. Red horse nine jumps to file seven, black horse eight jumps to file seven. The thirtieth move, red horse seven jumps to file five, black chariot four advances by two points. With red's newest force joining the battle, the edge file horse that had just hopped out, red's attacking force is now even stronger than before. 
the thirty first move. Red advisor four advances to file five. Black chariot four moves to file five. The thirty second move. Red pawn three advances by one point. Black horse seven jumps to file five. Red's pawn marched across the river, according to the chapter energy in the art of war. Thus, the energy developed by good fighting men is as the momentum of a round stone rolled down a mountain thousands of feet in height. Red's mighty force is unstoppable. The thirty-third move, Red Chariot A retreats by three points. In this position, Red is going to win materials and can ensure an advantageous tactical disposition. Red wins the game here. In this game, Red opens up with central cannon third foul pawn formation, and Black responds with screen horses third foul pawn. Both sides deploy pieces in an orderly way at the opening stage. During the transition from opening to middle game, Red sends out the seventh foul cannon, and puts it in the far side ground. Black's weak move becomes Red's opportunity. Where red is able to coordinate its eight foul cannon and the chariots on the flanks, which can cooperate with each other from the front to the rear, and gains the upper hand in terms of the formation of pieces. In the middle game, black plays a blunder move, chasing red's horse, thereby fails to strive for the occupation of the contentious ground near the central file and loses initiative. Red sees the opportunity, and decisively it takes black central pawn through the exchange of the horses, and then sacrifices the chariot for black central elephant. Red breaks through black's pawn rank, creating a formidable attack potential, and striking as a swooping falcon, it destroys black's defense on the deployment rank. Even if Black trades its chariot for Red's two pieces and make every effort to defend itself, its defense for the rear territory is vulnerable, and the general is outside of the safe place. With Red's edge foul horse and third foul pawn crossing the river, Red's active forces smoothly join the battle, ensuring an unshakable winning position, and eventually wins the game. In ancient times, Chinese chess was born out of imitation of wars. Therefore, the principles of Chinese chess can be sensibly likened to the art of war. When we have pieces on a facile ground, we should pay attention to the subtle changes in the position, which should be brought about correspondingly by the involvement of the connections between all our pieces. When there is a contentious ground emerging, we should strive for the occupation of it. And thus, the initiative over the whole game. In this game, from the transition of the opening towards the middle game, the two players start to engage in exciting fights, presenting brilliant moves that contain wonderful strategic and tactical design. The players have demonstrated the underlying principles of the game through the moves, which is very much worth learning for Xiangqi fans. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video.